afternoon and welcome to the first plenary session on digital learning and higher education track. First of all, let me thank the organizers for extending me an invitation to, to chair this particular track on higher education. The theme of this plenary session is envisioning e-learning on a global platform and vision 2020 policies, strategies, and relevance for achieving excellence. We have uh, four speakers, uh, Professor V.S. Ramamurthy, former Secretary DST, Distinguished Physicist, Mr. Raman Rao, Raman Rao uh, Honorable Minister for Technical Education, Government of Andhra Pradesh, is also expected he may join at any time. Uh, Mr. Terry Vasan, uh, Country Manager, India Smart Technologies, and Mrs. Irina Ghosh, Director of Education, Microsoft India. And also I see a large number of uh, Vice Chancellors, Distinguished Educationists, ICT experts in the audience. Uh, this will be a, uh, we will be following a flexible pattern uh, for this uh, particular session. I will be making uh, a few points, a framework for the discussion, and then uh, the eminent speakers will speak on uh, their perceptions on this particular area. Of course, this is a, a track for on higher education, but we cannot separate higher education from the spectrum of school, educa school education uh, in a in a basic sense. What is the relevance of technology? What is the relevance of e-learning? What is the relevance of ICT in education in all these areas? That is probably uh, the theme which we are going to discuss. When we think about a, a, a global platform, I think we cannot envision education or any activity as of now without thinking of a global platform. India is definitely a global pl platform for all, all such activities. Challenge before a country, highly populated country like India, is to bridge the gap in the various sectors of uh, education, uh, starting from literacy, not education. And when we say education, it is not, education is not just happening only in the uh, confines of the school or the higher education, the school de education departments or higher education departments. Education is happening even out, uh, not even. Education is happening, much, much more education is happening outside the formal confines of the school, uh, formal or conventional uh, school education departments and uh, the higher education departments. And uh, technology has a great role in this. The scaling up is the real challenge for a country like India, scaling up, dealing with very large numbers. Very large numbers, not, not numbers which, are, which we can define in a uniform pattern, very diverse, and very diverse groups. Uh, when it comes to literacy, if you just look at the uh, overall uh, developed uh, patterns, uh, we can see that Almost all the developed countries have universal literacy. That means over 95% of the adults can read, write, and count. And when it comes to school education, there is near universal school education. That means over 85% of the school eligible children complete school education in, in all developed countries, whether it be small or large. When it comes to higher education, uh, we have a large number of uh, universities ac across the world. We, we India also have a large number of universities. Your world average is that around 30 to 35 percent of uh, the 18 to 23 age group they get the opportunity of completing educa higher education. In developed countries, it is between 50 and 80 percent. 50 and 80 percent of the age group get the opportunity of post-school higher education. 
And these are the three educational parameters which we uh, see in all developed countries. There is also another parameter which is related to definitely to education, skill development. In all developed countries, over eight, 85 percent of the workforce they have some sort of a certification, whether it be a certificate, a diploma, or a degree, whatever it may be. Skills certification is there. And if we just look at India as an example, as a highly populated country, firstly developing uh, uh, population, there is no comparison other than with China. In these four parameters, literacy, school education, higher education, and skill development, where do we stand? Of course, we have achieved significantly, no doubt about it. But even now, uh, according to the government standards, government um, uh, statistics, even now 33-34 percent of our adults are illiter illiterate, even now. And even, uh, with the 67 percent also, uh, what is the literacy they, they, they have? There is, there is some question mark also. Anyway, uh, then coming to school, the, very, um, the purpose of literacy, we, we know the importance of literacy. The very ability to read, write, and count. That gives an individual, individual human security, which is the base of all other securities. Whether it be um, any kind of security, all these securities are ramification of the individual human security provided by this ability. That is nothing but human dignity. So when one third of the, our population is deprived of this thing, we have to think about ways and means of achieving or uh, achieving universal literacy. Uh, by way of technology integration. And when it comes to school education, of course, we have every day we hear a lot of interventions and innovations uh, happening in the uh, school education. Right to Education Act has been passed. We need, uh, in contrast to over 85 percent in developed countries, you take the uh, country average, out of 100 children going to the first standard, only 11 complete the 10th standard. Only 11, that is, that is a dropout. 89 out of 100 dropout uh, at different stages. We have, to, we have to really worry about them. And when it comes to higher education, with all universities and several thousands of colleges which, which we teach, which we administer, even now uh, with, the, with the distance education and the conventional education, only 2% of the age, that age group get the benefit of entering into a college. I'm not saying that meaningful completion or gainful employment, entering into a college. And then in the skill level, skill certified percentage, only 5%, millions of people work for us for the development of the millions, several millions, right from construction workers to the knowledge workers like us. Only 5% of this workforce has some sort of a certification. They are working. And it's very necessary that along with that work, they have to get some, le they, they are learning also. Along with work, they are learning. And this work integrated learning has to be capacity building and work integrated learning has to be promoted. In all these areas, only technology is the solution. No doubt about it. And we need teachers. We need several acts of teachers for the school education. We need teachers for the engineering colleges. We need teachers for the universities. Even um, we have created several central universities recently. There are no teachers. We need teachers. We need teachers for the, for the kindergarten, trained teachers for the uh, pre-primary education. So training, retraining, and continuous capacity building of teachers is a real challenge and this is not really happening and whatever uh, quality uh, deficits which we see in the education system is because of this lack of uh, training, retraining and continuous capacity building of teachers. 